are these people? We haven't really covered this publication much in the last year or so, and I, um, there's a good reason. And for a while, I was using their their stuff, and I thought they've got some really good articles. And there's a guy named Luis Feliz Leon who got really chummy with the mm. Teamsters, and a guy named Jonah Furman also, who was one of their top writers over there or affiliated. And he went to go work for Teamsters for a Democratic Union. And all of a sudden, it became very pro-Teamster, very pro-Teamster um, leadership narrative. <laughs> and I read something, actually. There was an article a couple of months ago about that. And I may bring that down the road. But this one I want to bring, because it was actually written by two Amazon New York workers talking about some of the things that they're trying to do to organize and to fight Amazon for better working conditions and some of the things that they're going through. And this is one of the things that we've always tried to do on How Do We Miss That and on INN is to bring the voice of the worker directly to you. Um, we've interviewed several current and former Amazon warehouse employees, not only from JFK, but JFK 8 in Staten Island, where they had the Amazon labor union organizing with now the Teamsters but also from other warehouses around the country. Uh, in this case, you have people from the five New York City warehouses coming together to make demands of Amazon. And I, I love this. Oh, oh, four New York Amazon. I'm sorry, four New York Amazon facilities. Apologies. The workers marched on management to deliver the, the petitions at four facilities from Amazonians United NYC. That's a separate group that has broken out. This is out of labor notes again. 600 of our Amazon co-workers at five warehouses around New York signed a petition demanding starting wages of 25 an hour, time and a half pay for time and a half pay for Prime Day, which is coming up in 2 days. Seasonal workers converted to permanent status within 30 days of employment. That doesn't seem unreasonable. And Juneteenth is a paid holiday. Of course, okay. The June 19th holiday celebrates the end of slavery in the U.S. and became a federal holiday in 2021, the first new federal holiday yep. since MLK Day was recognized in 1983. So they organized petitions across five warehouses. Like I said, it was five. So they delivered the petitions to, to managers at four. They organized petitions across five, which was LDJ5 on Staten Island, which famously had a failed vote after the JFK 8 uh, you know, winning vote that was in May of 2022 and AOC and Bernie had famously, famously stump speeched outside of LDJ 5 right before the, the failed vote. Packages were rerouted, uh, you know, and LG, LDJ 5 packages are routed to local facilities. The Massive Fulfillment Centers, JFK 8 on Staten Island, SWF1 in the Hudson Valley, which is where the customer orders are packed, and the delivery stations DBK4 and DNJ3 in the in Queens and in the Bronx, where packages are put into delivery vehicles and dispatched to mailboxes or doorsteps. So they're really kind of telling you a little bit behind the scenes about the delivery chain. And the nerds like me who follow this stuff actually appreciate learning <clears throat> which ones do what and who goes where. Because then it helps when I actually talk to the workers later on so that I know what's going on in their facility. At the smaller delivery stations with only a couple hundred employees, nearly half the workers signed. And at four of the five warehouses, okay. groups of workers have delivered the petition to Amazon management. So that's their montage video. All right. Coordinating their across workplaces. So so this is this is a good thing. Right. We began planning the petition in the New York region through what we call the Amazon Worker Summit, a loose network of workplace committees across New York and New Jersey. Worker leaders from each committee participated. I wonder what how they actually like communicated, what tools they used to actually do that and stay in touch, whether that was like a Slack group or uh, a um uh what's the other one that um that Zuckerberg has. I'm 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 blanking. It's like instant message with groups, and I don't use it. It's the one that every everybody overseas uses that one. Um someone will know it. 
At the summit meetings, we discussed which issues were important. We agreed on some common issues and brought them back to our warehouse committees. Once all the committees agreed on the key demands, we launched petitions in each warehouse. The main way we got signatures was just talking to people. What a surprise. Huh. Amazon treats us like numbers, but we've made it a point to get to know each, and other, co each other as co-workers and friends. This is the same stuff we talked about when we talked about the Massachusetts teachers, when we talked about the uh, Kellogg's workers, when we talked about UAW workers. When people actually start talking to each other, they find they have a lot more in common and can get a lot done, but Amazon keeps them siloed. We made sure to have these conversations on non-work time and in non-work areas, so it was protected concerted activity under the National Labor Relations Act. Because we know that Amazon is very quick to fire people for for fire, you know, for violating those kinds of acts and having these kinds of conversations that they deem anywhere outside of work, you know, within work time or within working areas. They also made sure to reach out to all the different social groups in their warehouses so that the committees represented everyone. I mean, that's that's great. They got 600 signatures. That's definitely not everyone at five warehouses, but they heard they heard people's grievances and desires to make change. Many workers are going through the same kinds of struggles to make rent and cover groceries. Of course they are because of what Amazon pays them and they don't get full-time hours. Yep. We all want stability, economic security, and respect. Basics. We the connected. Rent is too damn high. Yes, that's right. The rent is too damn high. We connected, but that's not Amazon's fault necessarily. That's BlackRock and and you know Vanguard and the other hedge funds mm -hmm. that are buying up all the real estate, you know, all the the residential real estate and pricing people out. Capitalism. That's right, Tim Tim Curry. We connected those issues to what it would take to achieve change, collective action. Now we've we've definitely talked about that before, and you know what are you what are you for? Yep. Now this is what they're for. By coming together, we felt less alone in our struggle to survive while working at Amazon. One of the things that they're fighting for is Juneteenth. Why? I don't think that it really is much of a question, but Juneteenth became a symbol of respect. We pointed out to our coworkers that the federal government has recognized it as a holiday for three years. Why not Amazon? The company already recognizes July 4th to celebrate the freedom of the country, but it doesn't honor a paid holiday to recognize the liberation of millions of enslaved people. This is an insult to workers who share these roots. And there are a lot of them at the warehouse level. Let's call it for what it is. They hire a lot of workers of color. Well, I think that's why they would be um, remiss to do it, right? Because how much of their population would celebrate that? You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, but it's it's that their executive team, you know, <laughs> largely, yeah. I would guess, is is pretty pretty bleached. So, yes, yeah. Instead, Amazon pays lip service to Juneteenth by offering food at some warehouses and Juneteenth themed <laughs> pins. Not even a pizza right. party. Even Dude, they while get, they get no, they get like Juneteenth pizza party. That's what Amazon hasn't come up with yet. Well, food you know? in some warehouses. Maybe so, it literally is the Juneteenth pizza party. Yeah, and pins or something pins somehow more racist that that they had made you on know? Timu, right? <laughs> or from one of their Amazon overseas distributors. Yeah. The yes, the Amazon sweatshop. Yep. <laughs> The mismatch between what Amazon no. says and what it actually does okay. makes the holiday an issue for many workers, and that makes sense. Then you've got the 25 bucks an hour where they say that we've made the case for hiking the minimum wage, to, starting wage, to $25 to combat the growing cost of living and attain economic stability. This is the New York region. They should be fighting for 30 or 35 an hour probably to start now, especially because they're part-timers. I mean, if you're getting three hours a day, $25 an, uh, an hour is 75 bucks. $35 an hour is 105 bucks. I mean, that covers your commuting costs to work, pre-tax, of course. Amazon recently hit $2 trillion in market cap for the first time. Meanwhile, we're scraping by. Thank you, Dr. Bezos.
Some co-workers live with their parents because they can't afford to move out. For those of us with kids, it's even harder to pay rent, groceries, and bills. Many people take second and third jobs to make ends meet. That's what Joe, that's the Joe Biden economy. You know, oh, they've, they've added all these jobs. Yeah, I've got three of them and I'm, I'm doing great. I, I still can't make my rent. Okay. We made the case for hiking the minimum wage, starting wage to $25 to combat the growing cost of living and attain economic stability. Amazon recently hit $2 trillion in market value for the first time. Meanwhile, we're scraping by. Some co-workers live with their parents because they can't afford to move out. For those of us with kids, it's even harder to pay, to pay for rent, groceries, and bills. Many people take second and third jobs to make ends meet. We work hard and put our bodies on the line to the point of injury to generate Amazon's lucrative profits. This is one of the biggest corporations in the world. It can afford to pay the living wage we're demanding. More than afford it, by the way. It can also afford to make workers permanent after 30 days. Most workers at Amazon are hired initially as seasonal. Their white badges mark them as workers with no job security who don't get all the paid time off benefits that permanent blue badge workers do. I remember when we first talked to, uh, to Matt from Kentucky, he talked about that. And that they also right. were rehiring people multiple times. Right now, Amazon can keep people in white badge status for up to 11 months. They're often fired after peak season. So they'll keep you and string you along and keep you in this limbo and then just broom you. And then six months later, you can come back and get rehired and start the process over again. The next Prime Day sales rush is coming up. July 16th and 17th, that's in a couple days. Amazon promotes Prime Day as a time when customers can get great deals, but in our warehouses, these savings come at a steep cost. It means that we have to process even more packages in a tight time frame to get them out for delivery. It's like another Christmas, minus the snow and Santa Claus. And plus sweltering heat. The grueling pace of work takes a toll on our bodies and well-being, so we deserve compensation during this intensified period when we know Amazon is also making extra profits. Last year, Amazon made $13 billion in sales on Prime Day, and that number has been growing every year. So, yeah, yeah it's like another Black another Friday. One, so. that, well, that's, that's what they're saying here. In two yeah. days, there's another Prime Day, and they want time and a half from going forward for Prime Days. They should get it for yeah. Black Friday as well. All right. They also, these issues are widespread across Amazon facilities. Our next step is to ask coworkers to do something about them, sign the petition, and get involved in our organizing for the long haul. Once we get enough signatures in all the, across all the warehouses, we deliver the petitions to management uh, at DBK4. We announced the petition at the morning stand-up meeting and handed out Juneteenth buttons on break. We then rallied everyone to join us during lunch in the break room and walked with a group of 20 people to management's office for the delivery. Multiple workers spoke up about the demands. Management, of course, refused to accept the petition, saying that would be recognizing the union. Heaven forbid they actually did that, but we expected that. The most important thing is that our coworkers saw their own power, recognizing that we are a union by acting like one, whether management likes it or not. The mood in the warehouse afterwards was positive. Many coworkers said they thought it was a strong action and asked how they could get more involved. Seeing dozens of coworkers standing together helped people overcome their fear and showed the collective action is possible. We're just getting started. So this is Dylan and Mirage. They work at, at DBK4 in New York City. I may need to reach out to them and see if we can get them in for a conversation. All right, this was the at Amazon Teamsters. They gathered over 600 signatures from coworkers and demanded $25 an hour in Juneteenth, like we said, that's the tweet. There's the video. This is 600 people on this petition talking as one. They can address us as 600 people as one. We got something to say. We got something to say. We were told by Amazon we would have every time to do something for Juneteenth, and we were not giving that. So because Amazon turned their backs on us, 
we will now turn our backs on Amazon. Amazon. They turn their backs on us, we turn our backs on them. They turn their backs on us, we turn our backs on them. Don't you think that Juneteenth ought to be a great honor? Yeah. Today it celebrates the emancipation of American workers and we have holiday bunting all over this building to remind us of how important it is. Everything but recognition is a holiday the same way the federal government does. We come here and work really hard day in and day out and some of our co-workers are having trouble finding a place in to live. They are homeless for more than 40 hours plus when this company makes billions and billions of dollars of our hard labor. We are not asking for anything crazy. Right now, the cost of living is amazingly high and it's so hard for us workers to pay rent. Remember the, remember the policy that we This is a protected concerted activity, Rob. You know, we bust our ass here, you know? So we deserve to kind of, you know, get out there. Right now, we have to establish a new minimum wage in order for it to even be fair for the amount of work we do here. So that minimum wage is 25 an hour and that step plan, it has to be redone. 80 cents a year, ain't doing it anymore. Amazon will talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, but it's never one-on-one. -on -one. It's a manager, the whole chain of command above them, HR, and you by yourself. So they can tell you something different, you something different, you something different, and the only witnesses are the people above them who are telling them what to say. So this is why we say no, we have these concerns together. You can discuss this with us. As a union, as a collective, we share these concerns. This is 600 people on this petition talking as one. They can address us as 600 people as one. Make Amazon pay. Make Amazon pay. Make Amazon pay. Make Amazon pay. Hell yeah, make Amazon pay. And by the way, if there's any way for you to be able to pay, your support is certainly greatly appreciated. Um, you can do that here. Cash app, dollar sign Indie News Network, patreon.com slash Indie News Network, paypal.me. There you see slash Indie News Network, I-N-D-I-E. And then you can donate on Rumble. Uh, we also have rockfin.com slash I-N-D left news. That's where we're at right now. And then... Um, the QR code that goes to our Kofi, co fee.com slash Indie News Network. Hey, how about that? All right. Well, money, please. Thanks, everybody.